the 2007 Apple Mac Mini. We took a look at this in a previous episode and tried to save it from the trash. Well, hey everyone, it's Mark here. Today's goal is we are going to try to put a modern Linux distro on here. You proved me wrong when I said this wasn't really usable in modern times. So, enjoy the ride. Okay, everyone, now that we're back, we're going to try out the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed distro. I've got it pulled up here. In my experience, it's always been rock solid and it is a rolling release as well, so it should be pretty cutting edge. Next, we're going to go ahead and download the offline 64 bit image. Hopefully, that'll work on this Mac Mini. And now that that's downloaded here, I've gone ahead and fired up Etcher as well as popped in a USB 2.0 memory stick for the best compatibility. So let's go ahead and try to get this flashed. Awesome, so it looks like that was a successful flash. Let's go ahead and eject this and get it plugged in the Mac Mini. Here's our memory stick that we just flashed the ISO image to. Let's pop this in the Mac Mini and see what happens. Well, it looks like it's not finding our memory stick or it's not detecting it as bootable at least. Let's try this one more time. Yeah, it's not detecting it. So let's move on. We're gonna try a different method. I didn't have too much faith in this booting from USB. A lot of these early Intel Macs don't really like to boot USB installers. And since this is a dirty 32 EFI, as people like to refer to, it basically means it's a 64-bit CPU on a 32-bit motherboard to my understanding. So that does give us a few compromises there. Moving on, I've actually found this thread here on how to prepare a 64-bit Linux distro for a 32-bit EFI 2006 Mac. I've already gone ahead and followed option two here to prepare our ISO image. So let's get this burned to a DVD and see what happens. Okay, and we're back at the Mac Mini again. Uh, it took a long time to burn that DVD, but I've got it right here. I have not tested this disk drive before actually, so let's cross our fingers and pop this in. Well, that's a breath of fresh air. As much time as I've spent on this so far, it did find our DVD on the first try, and I'm guessing our disk drive works at least. Uh, let's go ahead and select this. Well, that's kind of a tease. I was really excited to get this booted up, but it looks like it's either completely frozen or else I have no keyboard control. One of the two though, so let's uh, force restart this. Okay, everybody, so I've already gone ahead and restarted it another time. It completely was locked up again. Uh, I have since plugged in a Magic Keyboard that I found. I don't have too many older keyboards, but it, at least the little loading circle is spinning. It's not completely frozen this time. I still have no input control though. Let me try to find something else and reboot again. All right, I found a Logitech keyboard that seems to be working. Let's cross our fingers and get this installation underway. What a relief it is to see this screen finally. Well first we're gonna go ahead and just click next on this. It's just a language keyboard and license agreement. Next here we've got our network selection. 
I've actually gone ahead and configured this off camera, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and click next from here. Okay, and we've got a little pop-up here. It's just telling us that it's detecting an unsupported file system. It's our HFS partition that Snow Leopard is installed on right now. I'm gonna try clicking continue despite this issue. Let's see if this works or if we're gonna have to revisit this. Skipping forward a little bit, I've already activated all the default online repositories. So now we're gonna go with XFCE as our graphical interface. That should be lightweight enough for this system, I'm hoping, especially because this system has an Intel GMA 950. It wasn't really a good choice as graphics hardware then, and it definitely isn't now. It doesn't support anything higher than OpenGL 2.0, and not really that in a full sense either. After fighting around a bit there, I am gonna actually have to just format the entire drive. Let's continue. Skipping forward a little bit again here, I've just gone ahead and selected my region, as well as creating a user account. Uh, at this point, it looks like everything seems fine to me. Let's go ahead and click install. So it booted to a black screen the first time. I shut it down and powered it on again. Booted up just fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and eject this disk if it actually starts without it and can use its own boot partition. Okay, so we've got the flashing finder with the question mark. Yeah, no bootable devices detected here. So I'm gonna have to hit the drawing board and we'll be back. After a little bit of research there, I've gone ahead and burned the Tumbleweed Live XFCE ISO to a disk. I'm hoping that this will fix my issue. I really need to change the disk structure to master boot record. That way, to my understanding, it should make the Mac Mini detect and boot from the OS. So everything booted up successfully there onto the live DVD I burned. Uh, I've already gone and skipped ahead. We're at our installation settings now. I think I got this right. So let's click install and I'll speed up through this for you. Now that we're back, it's actually been about a full day at this point. I spent until late in the night fighting with this and could not get any type of graphical interface to work whatsoever. I went back to the first DVD and since I had already fixed the drive to master boot record, it was successful and I've made everything look a little more at home as well. So of course one of the first things we need to test is going to be YouTube playback. And I've got one of my videos loaded up here. At 720p, it's playing just fine. It may take a second to buffer here and smooth out, but that's also probably to do with the old Wi-Fi hardware. So let's move on to our next test. Now I've gone ahead and fired up Reddit here. Uh, seems to be loading just fine. I don't even need to use old.reddit. Uh, the only issue I see is we do not support the video player. It probably has to do with the Intel graphics hardly having any modern support. Next, I've gone ahead and fired up Yast here. Let's try to get Steam installed now. So now that we've got Steam installed and up and running, let's try to get CSGO to download and see if that'll launch. And again, it's another day. Uh, it took forever to get that downloaded and installed, but it's about time we launch CSGO and see if this works. In the bottom right corner, I just got a pop-up saying 18 troublesome files removed from Steam runtime. 
that doesn't sound too good, but let's see what happens. Well, isn't that a bummer? Uh, looks like it does not support the OpenGL requirements for this game. I'm not gonna press too hard. To my understanding, this hardware meets OpenGL 2.0 with certain Windows updates through software. Otherwise, from what I've understood, it meets 1.2 mostly. So I decided to give Doom a shot and it appears to be launching successfully, so that's awesome. Let's go ahead and try to start a new game here and see if we can actually get into this and play. Well, it may not be able to run CSGO or most modern games most likely, but it runs Doom fine. It actually runs Doom great, minus my bad playing skills. Well folks, there you have it. Everything is up and running. Obviously we can't play CSGO. We could try to source an old copy of Half-Life, but at that point, I've already got so much time in this, maybe for the future. We've got the Core 2 Duo T5600, the Intel integrated graphics, 2.9 gigs of usable memory. I'm actually pretty surprised. This is a fairly usable computer depending on what you're doing. Obviously, if you're trying to watch YouTube videos and other things, not so much. But if you're just trying to browse the basic web, it's more than usable, even with this mechanical hard drive. I'm also surprised. I didn't even have to source any drivers at all. Everything default installed out the box with this obsolete hardware. Well, folks, there you have it. Today, I tried something a little different. I tried to mess more with some software instead of the hardware side. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, remember to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to drop a comment down below for any suggestions or ideas for future topics. Share this video if you really liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and ding that bell so you get notified every time I upload content like this in the future. If anybody has any more information on the Intel GMA 950 and its state of OpenGL support, feel free to contact me. I'd love a little more clarity on that. And until next time.